Hey everyone, what's going on? My name's Allie, and I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with people who want to learn more about video editing. Upon doing this, I see a lot of the same mistakes taking place with new video editors and their edits. So in today's video, we're gonna look at the top five most common beginner video editing mistakes and how to not make them or how to fix them in Premiere Pro. So let's hop in there. We're in Premiere Pro and the first thing we're gonna look at that a lot of newbie editors make the mistake of doing is not trimming their clips before they add a dissolve. So let's look at what a bad dissolve transition looks like. We have this nice, pretty smooth handheld shot of a sunset and at the end of the shot, the camera sort of moves abruptly. Next, we have a shot of me and my buddy Adam hiking. So we'll bring our playhead in between these two clips, use the keyboard shortcut Command D or Control D to create a dissolve transition in between them. This notification pops up saying, insufficient media, this transition will contain repeated frames. Now, because we haven't trimmed either of these clips, we don't have any handles to work with. And handles are the few seconds or few frames of your clip before and or after the part of the clip that you actually want to use in your edit. Let's press OK and see what happens here. Whenever you see diagonal lines in Premiere Pro on an effect or in your footage, that's generally not a good sign. So between this dissolve having to create repeat frames in order to work and not trimming that camera shake at the end of the first clip, this dissolve is not going to look very good. And this shows an example of where a lot of new editors make mistakes. They don't trim their clips to remove bad camera moves or a clip kind of abruptly ending within their dissolve transition. To make this transition look a lot more pro, we'll just delete that first dissolve. You wanna make sure that you've trimmed the part of your clip that doesn't look good. So we're gonna trim this first clip to remove that abrupt camera move. We're gonna trim the beginning of our second clip as well so that we can see Adam's left foot just about stepping on the ground, press command D or control D on your keyboard to add a dissolve, and let's check this out. There you go, that dissolve is looking a lot better because we can no longer see those repeated frames or the abrupt camera shake from the end of the first clip in your transition. Next, let's take a look at this clip. As you can see, the horizon line is a little crooked. Now, you may or may not know how to correct that. If you don't know how to correct it, you can go over to effect controls and you can adjust the rotation of your clip. So I'll bring this clip to minus 2.5. Great, in doing that, we have straightened the horizon line, but we can now also see the empty black space behind our clip. To solve that problem, we'll scale into this clip just a little bit. Let's see how 107 looks. Now here's the mistake that new editors make. After fixing a crooked horizon line and scaling into the clip a bit, they don't double check to make sure that that empty space behind the clip is still showing. If we take a closer look here, you can still see that our clip hasn't covered the entire frame we're working with. So whenever you are rotating or moving around the position of a clip, it's always good to double check that that clip is completely taking up the space of the frame. A quick and easy way to do that is to create a color mat by going over to the project window, new item, color mat, press OK. For your color mat, you wanna pick a color that will stand out against the colors in your clip so that you can really quickly spot it. So let's pick red, OK. We'll raise the clip onto the V2 track and drag this color mat underneath the clip. And now you can see that little bit of red showing behind our clip, which indicates we need to make a few more adjustments. We'll adjust the position of our clip and scale into 108 so that that red color mat underneath our clip is no longer visible. Okay, so the next video editing mistake we're gonna take a look at, I was definitely guilty of when I was starting out as an editor, and that is, pushing the parameters of your color correction too far so that grain is introduced onto your clip. 
Okay, now let's take a look at this clip. Let's go up to window and click on Lumetri Color to open it up and start doing some color correcting. We'll bring the exposure to two. We'll decrease the shadows by bringing the slider to around 57. We'll bring the highlights down to around minus 49 and push the saturation as far as we can to 200. Let's just go up to the program window. I'll press the tilde key on my keyboard to watch this back in a larger screen. And as you can see in the darker areas of this clip, as well as the jacket, there's a lot of grain that we introduced onto this clip because we push the parameters parameters of our color correction too far. Depending on the camera that was used to record your footage and the settings that were used to record your footage, you may be able to push your color correction farther than I did in the example here, or not even as far. Generally, when I'm color correcting clips that aren't shot in the log, I won't push any of the parameters more than by plus 25 or minus 25, and I definitely don't push the exposure too far because that's a really quick way to introduce grain onto your clip. What you wanna take away from this is that you want to review your color correction. Zoom in on your program window and make sure that you haven't introduced grain onto your footage by pushing the colors too far. Back when I was in film school and I was getting super into video editing, I read a book called In the Blink of an Eye by Walter Murch. He edited Apocalypse Now, he worked on The Godfather, he's just a genius editor. Well, I really loved the book, the one thing that stood out to me the most was the rule that you never want to cut on a blink. So let's take a look at a talking head clip with a b-roll clip and what cutting on a blink looks like and why you shouldn't do it. All right, so we have two clips on our timeline. We have a talking head clip and we also have a B-roll clip. First, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you cut on a blink. Okay, we've got a blink right there. I'll drag my B-roll to where the playhead is and let's watch this back. Okay, and although this is more subtle, when you cut on a blink, when the B-roll clip shows up, it's a little jarring and it kind of takes you out of the video for a second. Let's find a point in our talking head clip where I am looking at camera and we'll move our B-roll clip to that point in our timeline. Let's check out how this is looking. And there you go, that feels better. It's more engaging because it feels like the person on camera is talking to you as the viewer and remaining engaged with you as the B-roll clip shows. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about is a bit confusing. Bear with me, I'm gonna do my best to explain it for a beginner's perspective, and that is talking about working with slow-mo. So for the case of keeping this simple, let's assume that you're gonna be editing in a 24 frame per second sequence. If you're working with a clip that was shot at 24 frames per second on a 24 FPS timeline, you don't wanna try and slow-mo that clip because the end result will look choppy. Your footage needs to be shot at a higher frame rate if you want to slow-mo it. The frame rate you choose to shoot in will determine whether or not you're capturing slow-mo footage. If you shoot in 60 frames per second or higher, your camera will capture that footage and play it back as slow-mo. You won't have to adjust the speed of it when you go to edit it because it will already play back in slow motion. If your camera has the option to shoot in 60p, that footage will also play back at 60 frames per second. So it won't look slow-mo unless you interpret your footage and work with it in a 24 frame per second sequence. Okay, so now let's take a look at this clip that was shot at 60p. I have it on my 24 frame per second timeline and when we play this back, it plays back at regular speed. So it currently looks like it was shot at 24 frames per second. That's because Premiere Pro is dropping frames from it so that it plays back at a regular speed. The thing I really like about working with 60p footage is we can still slow-mo it by going up to the project window, right clicking on the footage, clicking on modify, interpret footage, and changing the assume this frame rate from 1 to 24. Okay, and let's drag this interpreted footage onto our timeline and play it back. And as you can see, it now plays back in slow-mo. And there you go. You now know the five most common video editing mistakes and how to not make them or how to correct them in Premiere Pro. We have tons of filmmaking tutorials here on our channel and we're releasing new filmmaking tutorials weekly. So for more videos like this one about filmmaking and about editing, subscribe to our channel, ding the bell so you're notified when those new videos come out. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Bye for now.